the grandeur of a caliph's palace, sybaritic sun-drenched Mediterranean beaches, the staccato stamp of a flamenco dancer's heels, the ortush of pilgrims entering the cathedral at Santiago de Compostela after weeks of walking El Camino. You can find the soul of Spain in tourist attractions such as these, which represent the country's tumultuous history, rich culture, and enchanting natural beauty. For the sunlight playing endlessly off the scales of Gary's Guggenheim Museum and the throbbing street life of La Rambla and Plaza Mare to the forest of columns and Moorish arches disappearing into the silent expanse of Cordoba's Great Mosque, Spain exudes a vibrant energy and a captivating blend of past and present. No matter how much you have read or how many pictures you have seen of Granada's Alhambra palaces, this Moorish pleasure palace will still take your breath away. The Nasrid dynasty's royal palace is the artistic highlight of Spain's Islamic period, when Al-Andalus as they called Andalusia represented the epitome of culture and civilization in Europe's Middle Ages. The Alhambra complex includes several buildings, towers, walls, gardens, and a mosque, but it's the indescribably intricate stone carvings, the delicate filigrees, the magnificent tile-lined ceilings, the graceful arches, and serene courtyards of the Nasrid palace that will haunt your dreams. That said, the adjoining palace built for the Emperor Charles V, even in its unfinished state is the finest example of high Renaissance architecture in Spain. And General Life's terraced gardens offer a peaceful respite from the grandeur and splendid views back at the rest of the Alhambra. Antony Gaudi took the architectural style known as Art Nouveau a step farther, even, some have argued, into absurdity. The fanciful and outrageous buildings he created in Barcelona have become landmarks, the signature attractions of this Catalan city. Foremost is the Sagrada Familia Church, officially the Temple Expiatory de la Sagrada Familia the Holy Family Church of the Atonement. One of Europe's most unconventional churches, it is also unfinished, so as you look down from its hour you can see the work in progress below. You may search in vain for absolute straight lines in Gaudi's Casa Mila, his last and most famous secular work it resembles a piece of sculpture more than a functional building. Be sure to ascend to its roof the chimneys are said to have inspired the image of Darth Vader from Star Wars. Parked well overlooks the city from a hillside, the views and gardens framed by fantastical creatures salamanders, fish, an octopus and designs in bright ceramic chit mosaics. A fanciful towered house near the entrance is largely covered in coloured ceramics. Unlike most buildings, Gaudi's appeal even to children and to adults who don't care a thing about architecture, for one simple reason they're just plain fun to look at. Read more 11 top rated tourist attractions in Barcelona once the principal mosque of Western Islam and still known as the Mezquita, Cordoba's mosque is one of the largest in the world and the finest achievement of Moorish architecture in Spain. In spite of later alterations that carved out its center to build a Catholic cathedral at its heart, the Great Mosque ranks with the Alhambra in Granada as one of the two most splendid examples of Islamic art and architecture in Western Europe. Building materials from Roman and Visigothic buildings were used in the construction, which began in 785, and by 1000, it had grown to its present dimensions, its prayer hall with no fewer than 19 aisles. No matter where you stand or which direction you look, its rows of columns and rounded Moorish arches line up in symmetrical patterns. Narrow, winding streets, small squares and low whitewashed houses with beautiful patios visible from the street fill the old Judaria around the mosque, a Moorish atmosphere inherited from its past. Read more 11 top tourist attractions in Cordoba Easy Day Trips The Prado alone ranks with the world's top art museums for the riches of its collections. But add the Reina Sofia National Art Museum, the Tusan Bornemisa Museum, and the Kexa Forum, all along Madrid's mile-long, tree-shaded boulevard, and you have what may be the world's highest concentration of priceless art treasures. It's no wonder this is known as El Paseo del Art Boulevard of the Arts. After a 2007 expansion that doubled its exhibition space, the Prado added another 12 galleries in 2009 to house a collection of works by Goya and other late 19th century artists. The Prado has the world's largest collection of Spanish art, an impressive continuum from 12th century medieval works through the avant garde movement of the early 20th century, and is especially noted for its works from Spain's Golden Age by El Greco, Velázquez, and Goya. 
but its riches are not all Spanish. Other highlights are the medieval murals and retablos, paintings by Flemish and Dutch artists. Be sure to see the fantasy world of Hieronymus Bosch and works by Rubens and Bruegel, and Italian art Botticelli, Raphael, Correggio, Titian, and Tintoretto. Highlights of the reign are Sophia's impressive 20,000 works Picasso's Guernica and works by Miro, Dali, Dubuffet, Braque, Serra, Calder, and Magritte. Read more 15 top rated tourist attractions in Madrid San Lorenzo del Escorial, about 45 kilometers northwest of Madrid, was the summer home of Spain's kings, and in 1563, work was begun there on a huge complex, which would include a monastery, church, royal palace, mausoleum, library, and museum, all conceived as a monument to Philip II and his reign. The result is a staggering collection of attractions, built around 16 courtyards, its rooms and structures connected by 16 kilometers of corridors. At its core is the church, the highlight of which is Herrera's 30-meter-high retablo, made of jasper and red marble and approached by a flight of 17 steps. Along with the vaulted and frescoed ceilings by Tibaldi in the rooms off the lower cloister, highlights of the monastery of the Pantheon de los Reyes, the Baroque burial vault of the Spanish kings and the library, a grand room also decorated by Tibaldi frescoes. In the palace be sure to see the Bourbon Suite, where the state apartments of Charles IV are decorated with rare furnishings and 338 tapestries. Beyond are the art-filled private apartments of Philip II. The picture gallery below has a large collection of fine paintings, including works by Hieronymus Bosch, Albrecht Dura, Titian, Tintoretto, Veronese Belathcath, and El Greco. Read more 15 top rated tourist attractions in Madrid You really have to see this building to believe it No photograph has ever done justice to this symphony of shapes, so alive that they seem ready to take wing. American architect Frank Gehry used blocks of limestone and undulating sheets of titanium to turn the notion of modern architecture on its ear. So thoroughly did he succeed that two new terms were born from it. The Bilbao effect the ability of a city to turn its fortunes around by constructing a single world-class building in architurism, a whole segment of the travel industry revolving around landmarks of contemporary architecture. Inside the museum are traveling exhibitions and rotating displays of its own collections of modern art. Read more 12 top rated tourist attractions in Bilbao La Giralda Tower, Seville Cathedral and the Alcazar combine to form a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The tower is a minaret, a masterpiece of Almohad architecture, according to UNESCO. The cathedral has more interior space than St. Peter's in Rome and a 37-meter main altar of carved statues completely covered in gold. The monumental tomb of Christopher Columbus is held aloft by a quartet of larger-than-life figures. La Giralda, the emblem of Seville, began life as a minaret and is all that's left of the city's great mosque, destroyed to build the cathedral. The Alcazar opposite was begun by the Moors in 712 and continued after the Christian reconquest by King Pedro in the 1300s in the ornate neo moorish style called Madeira. The rooms and salons are breathtaking, and the gardens are a joy to stroll in, shaded by fragrant orange and lemon trees. Adjoining on the east is Santa Cruz, the former Dudaria Jewish Quarter, a neighborhood of whitewashed homes, iron balconies, and flower-filled courtyards. The magnificent Cathedral of Santiago St. James was built to house and honor the relics of the saint, and it has been the goal of pilgrims since the Middle Ages, the culmination of the completing the famed Camino de Santiago. One of the outstanding monuments of early Romanesque architecture, the cathedral was built between 1060 and 1211, and despite the Baroque transformation of the exterior in the 16th to 18th centuries, the interior is still in the purest early Romanesque style. You'll see both of these periods at play as you enter the west front, through one of Spain's most impressive church facades. Step inside to face the Portico de la Gloria, part of the old west front now concealed by the 18th century facade. This triple doorway is one of the largest and most magnificent collections of Romanesque sculpture in the world. The focal point of the interior is the elaborately decorated Capilla Mare, built over the Apostle's tomb. In the center of the high altar of jasper, alabaster, and silver is a 13th-century wooden figure of the Apostle, richly adorned in precious metals and gems. On either side, narrow staircases lead up behind the figure so that pilgrims can kiss the Apostle's cloak culminating the pilgrimage. In a crypt under the altar, the Apostle's remains are in a silver casket. 
the throbbing heartbeat of Spain's vibrant capital city, Plaza Mayor has played an important part in Madrid life since the 16th century, when Philip II entrusted the task of designing it to his favorite architect Juan de Herrera, builder of the Escorial. It has served as the stage for ceremonial events the proclamation of a new king, the canonization of saints, the burning of heretics and public entertainments such as chivalric tournaments and bullfights. The cafes reaching out onto its pedestrian and early stone pavement, and the restaurants shaded under its arcades are Madrid's living room, popular meeting places for madrilinos and tourists alike. Read more 15 toprated tourist attractions in Madrid when Valencia diverted the course of the river that had repeatedly flooded the city, it was left with a broad, flat riverbed spanned by bridges. It was upon this clean palette that the brilliant Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava created a breathtaking ensemble of structures that have become a magnet for aficionados of contemporary architecture. Not only the buildings, but the museums, arts venues, and aquarium by Felix Candela and the only building not designed by Calatrava form a series of tourist attractions that rank among Spain's most popular. Europe's largest oceanographic aquarium, L'Oceanographic, was built in the shape of a water. Lily with buildings dedicated to different aquatic environments from the tropics to the poles. With the record as Europe's sunniest place, and mile after mile of white sands lapped by gentle seas, it's no wonder that the Costa del Sol beaches are the goal of sun-starved northern Europeans looking for sun-ons and getaways. This popularity caused serious overdevelopment initially, but the Andalusian government has not only put a stop to this, it has begun the process of tearing down the worst offenders and returning entire sections of coast to natural landscapes, clean beaches, and attractive new buildings that are more in harmony with the surroundings. The beaches are not Costa del Sol's only attraction for tourists. Revitalizing its hub city of Malaga has made this coast even more alluring to everyone. Yachtsmen love the smart marina of Puerto Banas, and avid golfers head west from Marbella's old world charms to Nueva Andalusia, known as Golf Valley for its more than 50 courses. A few steps from the beach in Marbella is the old town of whitewashed houses and well-preserved remains of the Moorish Castillo. Strolling along La Rambla on a summer evening, you might think that every single one of Barcelona's inhabitants was there with you. It's definitely the place to be after work on a summer evening or on a weekend. This tree-lined boulevard cuts a green line not a very straight one through the city centre, stretching northwest from the Columbus Memorial near the port. The section to the Placa de Catalunya is lined with plane trees, its wide pedestrian zone flanked by a narrow road on each side. Along with its flower and bird markets, La Rambla has a number of book and newspaper stands, as well as restaurants and cafes with open-air tables. Pavement artists, street musicians, living statues, and impromptu performers all add to its lively atmosphere. Read more 11 toprated tourist attractions in Barcelona Moorish Gothic and Renaissance architecture mingle and blend into a city that El Greco captured in one of his most famous paintings. High on a granite hill and surrounded on three sides by the deep gorge of the Targis River, it presents a stunning profile approaching it from below is an unforgettable sight. The layout of the town, with its irregular pattern of narrow streets and numerous blind alleys, reflects its Moorish past and the architecture of the Christian period is represented by the numerous churches, convents and hospices. This makes the old city a kind of open-air museum illustrating the history of Spain, and it has been listed by UNESCO as part of mankind's cultural heritage. The Gothic cathedral is splendid, its interior richly decorated, the two synagogues in the atmospheric old Judaria are ornate in the Moorish style. While in that quarter, be sure to see the Church of Santome for its El Greco masterpiece, Read more 15 top tourist attractions in Toledo easy day trips poised like dabs of white frosting atop the steep crags of southern Andalusia, the white towns are not just beautiful, they speak of this region's long and fascinating history. West of Gibraltar, mountains rise straight from the sea, and among them hide these white towns, each on its hilltop. Most spectacular is Arcos de la Frontera, whose plaza beside the Gothic church ends vertiginously in a 137-metre cliff, affording views across a valley of olive, orange, and almond orchards. Its maze of winding cobbled streets lead past cafes and craft shops selling ceramics and pottery to a Moorish castle. A total of 19 of these villages of small white houses are in the area around the Grey Zalema Nature Reserve. 
Grays Alema and Zahara de la Sierra are two others worth seeing. A good base in the region is Jerez de la Frontera, home of flamenco and Andalusian thoroughbreds. Watch these horses precision ballet at the Royal Andalusian School of Equestrian Art, and for authentic flamenco, visit Centro Cultural Flamenco. Read more 10 top tourist attractions in Cadiz Unique Excursions The highest peak in Spain, this ancient but still simmering volcano is also one of Europe's top natural wonders. The Pico de Tadia and the Caldera de las Canadas, a gigantic volcanic crater, together form the Parque Nacional del Tadi, at the center of the island of Tenerife. Enlisting the park in 2007, UNESCO cited its natural beauty and its importance in providing evidence of the geological processes that underpin the evolution of oceanic islands. You can explore El Tadi in several ways. You can drive a hike across the inside of the caldera the crater floor 12 miles in diameter and a barren moonscape of colored rock formations that's like driving into the center of the earth. You can climb El Tadi's cone, but an easier way to get close to the top is by an 8-minute cable car ride. On a clear day, views cover the entire archipelago and can extend to North Africa the nearest land mass to the Canary Islands. Hotels